Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome to the introductory econometrics course. Today, I will continue to solve the problems for introductory econometrics or modern approach, the seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's find answers for Chapter Thirteen: Pooling cross sections across time, simple panel data methods. In the first problem, we assume that in example thirteen point one, the averages of all factors other than education have remained constant over time, and that the average level of education is twelve point two for the nineteen seventy two sample and thirteen point three for the nineteen eighty four sample. Using the estimates in table thirteen point one. Find the estimated change in average fertility between 1972 and 1984. The coefficient on the year dummy variable, y84, is minus 0.545. The coefficient on education is minus 0.128. The change in the number of kids equals. Minus zero point six nine. It means holding the other variables in the model fixed. One hundred women in nineteen eighty four are predicted to have about sixty nine fewer children than one hundred comparable women in the base year nineteen seventy two. The drop is due to education. And the unobserved factors that are not captured by the other explanatory variables in the model. Let's do problem two. The following equations were estimated using the years 1978 and 1981. Compare the estimates on the interaction term with those from equation 13.9. Why are the estimates so different? The coefficient on the interaction is the difference in differences estimator in equation thirteen point nine in the textbook. Here, the coefficients on the interaction terms are not the difference in differences estimators. The first equation does not have the year dummy variable. And the second does not have the incinerator location dummy variable. Both regressions suffer from omitted variable bias. As a result, the estimates for the interaction term are biased. Let's solve problem three. Why can we not use first differences when we have? Independent cross sections in two years, as opposed to panel data, because the observations in different time periods are not for the same individual in independent cross sections. We cannot find data for the same unit in two years, so we cannot first difference the data. The main difference. Between the panel data and the independently pooled cross section, is that we follow the same individuals across time to collect panel data, but we don't know whether the individuals in different years are the same in pooled cross sections. Let's go to problem four. If we think that beta one is positive in equation thirteen point fourteen, and that delta mu and delta unemployment are negatively correlated, what is the bias in the ORS estimator of beta one in the first difference equation? We write down the ORS bias formula. The bias in the ORS estimator depends on the correlation between delta mu and delta unemployment. If it is negative, 
then the bias is negative. So the OLS estimator beta 1 hat is downward biased. We underestimate the unemployment effect on the crime rate. Let's do problem 5. Age changes by the same amount over time for everyone. So it is perfectly collinear with the year dummy variable in the first differenced equation. It violates the no perfect collinearity assumption. We should drop age from the model. Let's find answers to problem 6. In 1985, neither Florida nor Georgia had laws banning open alcohol containers in vehicle passenger compartments. By 1990, Florida had passed such a law, but Georgia had not. In part 1, suppose you can collect random samples of the driving age population in both states for 1985 and 1990. Let arrest be a binary variable equal to unity if a person was arrested for drunk driving during that year. Without controlling for any other factors, write down a linear probability model that allows you to test whether the open container law reduced the probability of being arrested for drunk driving. Which coefficient on the model measures the effect of the law? The linear probability model is as follows. We define two dummy variables for time and space. Let the dummy variable D90 equal 1 if the data was collected in 1990 and 0 in 1985. Let the dummy variable FL be 1 if, the f if in Florida and 0 in Georgia. The coefficient on the interaction term measures the effect of the law on the probability of drunk driving arrest. We can use the T statistics and its p-value to test whether the open container law reduced the probability of being arrested for drunk driving. We can draw a table and write down the average arrest probability in each case. The bottom line of the table shows that the beta 3 hat is the difference in arrest in Florida between the two years minus the difference in Georgia between the two years. Or we can see from the right column that beta 3 hat is also the difference in arrest in 1990 between the two states minus the difference in 1985 between the two states. Under the parallel chance assumption, beta 3 hat is the causal effect of the open container law on the arrest probability. In part 2, we are asked whether we want to control for other factors in the model and what some of these factors might be. The parallel chance assumption requires the drivers living in the two states have the same change in the arrest probability over time in the absence of the law. Since the drivers in the two states are different in many characteristics that might violate the parallel chance assumption, we should control for those factors. We hope that after holding those factors fixed, the arrest chance will be the same for the two states. In this regression, we use individual level data. The other individual level factors include age, gender, race, education, marital status and health status. 
the inclusion of the factors also reduces the sum of squared residuals and leads to a smaller standard error of the estimate and a more precise estimate. In Park 3, suppose we can only collect data for 1985 and 1990 at the county level for the two states. The dependent variable would be the flexion of licensed drivers arrested for drunk driving during the year. How does this data structure differ from the individual level data described in part 1? What economic method would we use? We can apply the two-period panel data analysis to the county level data. The data is at the county level instead of the individual level, making it easier to collect the panel data. The advantage of the panel data method is that we can use the fixed effect to capture all the county-specific unobserved factors that affect the arrest flexion. We allow the unobserved factors represented by the fixed effect to correlate with the law variable. We can still obtain a consistent estimate by first differencing. Let's solve the seventh problem. We compare the equations with equation 13.13 .13 in the textbook. The first equation's estimate on the interaction term is fairly close to that in 13.13, .13, while the estimate in the second equation is much larger than that in the textbook. To see why, we can write down the omitted variable formula first. The bias depends on beta 2 and the correlation between x1 and x2. In part 1, the after policy change dummy is omitted from the model. The coefficient on it is tiny, 0 0.0077, and it results in a slight bias. By contrast, the bias is larger in part 2 because the high income worker dummy variable is omitted and its coefficient is 0 0.256. It leads to a large bias. That is why the estimate for the interaction term is much larger than that in the true relation model in the textbook. Thank you very much for solving the problems with me. See you in the computer exercises soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.